and welcome to the Zach Carnage video tutorial for how to create your very own dual disc on a student budget. Keep in mind that this whole video was created and uh, the construction of the dual disc was all done from uh, university by a poor student uh, using whatever resources they could find available to them. So without further ado, let's get on to this video and I hope you enjoy. Step 1. Assemble as much cardboard as you can possibly find. Next, place five cards of your choosing onto the cardboard, allowing enough space around them in groups of three and two so that they can later on be secured into position. Next, with a pen, mark out the positions of each card and shape out the general shape of the dual disc. Don't forget to allow for the sharp edges of its luxurious design. With the shape of the card holders now cut out, you will need to find some other form of card in order to form the emplacements for each individual card. If you are a student, then you may find that you have an abundance of revision cards lying around, and these will be extremely useful, as they are almost exactly the right colour to fit in with the original dual disc design. In order to get the right shape and size for your card holders, we're going to take one of these revision cards and make a cut midway between the title line, which is indicated by this thicker blue line here at the top, and the first line of writing, straight away across all the way through, and this will form little strips of card, which can be used to hold the cards in place. The remaining section will be this size relative to the original one, and is extremely useful for putting it in your cards. With your card holders ready, you can attach them to the main part of the dual disc using staples. If you do use staples, this will enable you to simultaneously create spell and trap card zones underneath each of the individual monster zones, giving you exactly the right number. To construct the graveyard, you're going to need a piece of cardboard which is roughly 24 centimeters long and roughly 10 wide and simply fold it across on the long side and with a new section you can cut out a uh, small uh, rectangle here plus a larger rectangle here and then uh, fix it with staples on either side this will allow you to be able to place your cards into the graveyard with relative ease and then they can also be removed if perhaps you use a card such as Monster Reborn if it were unbanned and we're going to put this to the side for now and this will come back to in a little while Next, cut out one circle of cardboard with a diameter of roughly 16 centimeters and a thinner piece of cardboard which is roughly 15 centimeters long and just three or four uh, wide. This uh, thinner section is going to be used to hold the deck in place and you should allow about three centimeters uh, for the height of your deck but it really depends on the actual size of your deck yourself and whether or not you use card sleeves. So I would recommend testing out different pieces of cardboard, make sure you've got plenty spare so that you don't end up wasting too much. Here it is with the deck holder and graveyard section both attached to the disc. You can see that I've added an extra brace on the back of the deck holder section to make sure that none of the cards fall out of the back when they're put inside. Now you can see that we've advanced a little further using a bridging device, which is uh, just another piece of cardboard, to connect the two dueling sections together, and this in turn also connects via the disc, so that we now have one piece together. You can see that we've also connected what will eventually end up being the life point counter to the top of the deck section. All you need for this is simply another piece of cardboard which is long enough to cover the top of the deck section, as well as angling down and connecting via staple or silver tape to the bottom of the disc. With the help of some more white revision cards, you're able to encapsulate the dual disc itself by simply wrapping them around and sliding them underneath the top part of the life point counter. Now we're ready to add details and to construct the arm support. On the underside of the dual disc, I have now attached a wrist strap, which takes the form of one 
lengthy piece of cardboard running from here all the way down to the end of this black section here. Um, originally, you can see if I lay it out flat, that's the general shape that we had. And then I made a cut in here and here, which enables this part to be curled, thus uh, connected around the wrist. Uh, you can create a slit in this side by poking holes and then cutting through all of them at once. And then you can create a little notch in this one, doing exactly the same technique so that this will actually connect through there while it's wrapped around the wrist. And then this lengthy piece here then connects to the entire device, uh, allowing it to be easily attached so that you have a stable connection while it is on your wrist. So here you can see the completed dual disc, uh, just the few details which have been updated. Obviously we've done all of the silver using a um, just a silver permanent marker and then using black uh, whiteboard pens coloured in a very a variety of black areas and it also helps to outline specific areas such as the dueling panels um, because this helps to give that very sort of uh, solid feel that you get in, uh, for example, anime and cartoons. Um, so that really helps out with the design. Uh, there's also a blue eyes white dragon head um, on the side next to the uh, life point counter. Um, some small, uh, not very noticeable, but still there, glowing effects uh, put around the graveyard. And uh, on the other side you can see that we have uh, the cause of death in uh, Latin. And uh, actually along the front panel of the jewelers it also says uh, that bodies grow slowly but die quickly. So, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, don't forget that you can leave those in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and stay tuned for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Warhammer and randomness related videos.